quite challenging to get a good video capture of the LCD display on the VEX IQ brain. So we have to do it in a dark room or at nighttime in my case. So that's why this is going to be a recording instead of me showing you how to do it live. So when we first start the brain, it comes up with driver control and demos. If we choose driver control, it gives us three options. Run, which will let us use the pre-configured software with the joystick to drive the robot around. There's also configure. If we go to configure, use the up or down arrows to navigate and then the check mark to move to the next, you'll notice that we can change control. So using the check mark, we can change it from right stick to left stick or to two joysticks. We can also change any of these options below it from normal to reversed. So if we built a robot and it drives backwards, it's easy just to come in here and change the configuration. Use the check mark to change it and then the X to save it. Okay. We can also reset to default, which is going to reset all the settings back to the factory defaults. From this menu, there's also demos. So these demos are going to give you some sample code that uh, goes with the autopilot robot and with some of the tutorials. From the main menu, if you hit the X or the back button, it brings you to this menu. Menu and this menu gives you system info, device info. So system info tells you things like battery voltage, radio data, and it also gives you the ID number. That ID number is what you're going to need if you want to program wirelessly with your iPad or Android device. You can also turn the sound on and off. We can calibrate the controller. We can tell it where we want it to start, which menu when we first start it up. Again, we can reset all settings, erase user programs, and this is where you turn the smart radio on or off if you want to use it with wireless devices for programming. I'm going to scroll up to the device info. The device info allows us to scroll through and there's smart ports, so the 12 ports on here the brain automatically detects what's plugged in. So it knows, for instance, that we have a motor plugged into port number one. If we turn this motor, you'll see that we actually get data. And it's going to tell us the speed of how fast I turn it, the angle, as well as the number of turns. We can also hit the check mark. And as you can hear, it's a little dark to see. The motor starts turning and we can adjust the speed with the arrow keys. We can also hit the check mark and turn it off. So on port one, we've got a motor. What have we got hooked up to port two? Oh, we've got a distance sensor. So right now the distance sensor is not seeing anything, but if we put an object in its way, you'll notice that it shows us the distance in millimeters as well as in inches. So it's a great way to test if the distance sensor is working and to measure how close you are to an object. Part three, we've got the color sensor. So the color sensor has three different modes. It's got a three color mode, it's got a 12 color mode, and it's got a grayscale mode. So if we go back to the 12 color mode, we can now see that it'll tell you different colors as it sees them. It'll do the same in the three color mode. And in the grayscale mode, instead of giving us a color, it just gives us a value. So it gives us a different value of how much gray or how much darkness it sees. It also tells us the distance, whether it's close or far away, because it's a little dark in here, it's gonna give us a bad reading and tell us that everything's close. But with lights on, it works quite well. Next is the gyro. So the gyro is basically an electronic compass that tells us what angle the robot is on. So when we start the robot, that's always zero degrees. And then as the robot drives around and turns, you'll see that the degrees do change. So the gyro works really well in the software for making those crisp, sharp 90 degree and 45 degree turns or whatever angle you want to be able to have your autonomous work very well. Port 5 is the touch LED sensor, and you'll notice that 
it's lit up and if we touch it we can change color and you can see that if it tells us whether it's pressed or released and what color it's showing Okay, port 6 is another motor. Again, if we hit the check mark, we can get that motor turning. We can test that everything's working, everything's hooked up. And we can also check what different speeds will do. Again, hit the check mark to stop the motor. So it tells us if we've got anything plugged into the port. So if we had something plugged into this port, obviously we would have an issue. But since we have nothing plugged into port 7, everything's fine. Port 8, oh, we've got a bumper switch. So as you can see, it shows us the state, pressed or released. So this is how the device menu can be used to verify that the sensors are working and also get insight into how they work and what kind of readings you can expect.